Alright, hello everyone, thank you again for tuning in, welcome back to the Get Good stream. So, just another introduction again since it's been two weeks. Uh, this is where myself, along with some friends, will help those of you who are you know, not necessarily bad, but who want to learn about new decks or just want to advance your game a little bit more than what you're used to. Basically, you know, if you think you're already good, this stream is not for you, but uh, if you want to learn just a bit more about Vanguard or just hear some other people talking along about things, then this is where you want to be. So, this week we're talking about Vanquisher, and the reason we're talking about Vanquisher is all twofold. So the first is, I would link it, but I'll link it later in the chat probably, but about two or three weeks ago, Solemn Vanguard, who's a good friend of mine and who I respect a lot, he uh, released a video talking about you know his ideas about the meta going into 2014, or oh, sorry, GBT 13. And one of the things he said that I found quite interesting was that, you know, he obviously put Overlord and Chaos in Tier 1 because they are actually broken. But he also put Vanquisher in Tier 1.5 because he rated it very quietly. And I was quite curious about this. I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Because I always put Vanquisher myself as a deck that's good, but not amazing. Like, I'd never, I would never expect Vanquisher to win a tournament. But he rated it very highly. And then last week, if you guys tuned in, we were playing Overlord. And I was using, uh, I was using some old deck. No, yeah, we were we were using Overlord, and I was playing Vanquisher against Overlord. And one thing we found is that in GPT-13, there are these new double R heal triggers that bind themselves in the drop zone. And as well as that, in the Link Joker set, there's the Messiah PG that binds us off from drop zone. So there's a lot of cards nowadays that are just randomly binding them themselves. And plus, the way that the game is going, with a lot more emphasis on very high power impact first and second strides you know you want the game to be over faster sooner than sooner rather than later because then otherwise they'll get to gb8 they'll get to their zero dragons and the game will be over and we found that vanquisher actually has a lot of potential going into this like this environment is seems very perfect for what they want to do so yeah like as always i've got tony joining me hello guys so let's just uh talk a bit more, before we look at exact, the exact list, let's kind of talk a bit more about exactly why people might be overlooking Vanquisher, or why they might be, like me, treat it as not a threat. Alright, so basically, when people think of Vanquisher back then, uh, there was not a lot of threat, because Thunderstrike uh, was not a keyword, it was more of a restriction, I'll say. But now, with uh, Sparking, with uh, Buster, Dragon Strike, Thunderstrike is a lot easier to hit. Uh, so you enable your units with uh, Thunderstrike a lot sooner, a lot faster, uh, and that leads you to get an earlier power spike, which can make a faster push towards uh, getting your win con. Yeah, and I think as well as that, Narakami is still one of like the three or four clans that has a disruptive G guard. So yeah. while it's not as strong as like Belog or Griffin, they still have that hand trap control aspect, but at the same time they've always been the more aggressive of the two retire clans. Though that, yes. might, that might not necessarily hold true anymore because Kagura is now, hi, I make 21k columns for free, look at me. But I think Narukami still has, I think, slightly better offensive potential than Kagura. I think that would be fair mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. Which makes them very well-placed uh, in the meta. Gave away their defensive options compared to uh, Kagura for like a heavier offensive line. Yep. There's a lot of more uh, offensive pressure as well compared to Kagero. Yeah. So I guess yeah, we can basically just the uh, more offensive brother. Which I think, especially in you know when you look at the meta nowadays, going you know coming out of the Link Joker booster, going into GPT thirteen, you know, you're going to be dealing with resist for Stavas, Overlord, uh, Neo Nectar's getting a boost, Tachikaze is getting devastate, Link Joker is still very popular. And then mm -hmm. you've got stuff like Royal Paladin and Shadow Paladin, who are always going to be there. But then things like Night Rose and Grand Blue have like, uh, and Luard have actually dropped off a little bit. And then ZTB to an extent as well is, you know, it's no longer that sixty percent of the game threat yep. it used to be. I so, think a lot of that. Yep. No, Vanquisher's small rising can be attributed to a lot of that. It's not a lot of that can be attributed to the rising, but yeah, because yeah. of all of those like decks that 
actually help feel Vanquisher him himself helps uh, make Vanquisher a better deck now. Yeah. So, let's get into the list, and uh, I want to save the triggers for later, because I think our trigger stuff is very... There's, yeah. there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the trigger... Well, not a lot. there's not a variation, but there's a lot to talk about. So I'm going to start off with the Grade 1 lineup. So we've got Smashbox a Dragon, who's part of the new set of support, really strong. Basically a Jeffrey clone who also countercharges. Um, and gives your column resist. Yeah. That's nuts. Especially when Overlord is as popular as it is now. Yeah. We've got Anastasia, the new G PG, again, part of the new suite of support Vanquisher got recently. She's basically a PG who draws you a card, which is nuts. Yep. We've got four Mighty Bolts, because Stride Fodder is Stride Fodder. You've got two copies of an old card, Dragon Dancer for Teen, who's Thunderstrike 2, when she's played, Soul Blast 1, draw a card. I think Vanquisher lists before were playing her, but out of sense of there's nothing better, whereas now she's being played because she's actively good. Yes. I think back then, uh, Bankster's list played her, and they played Chainbolt. Yeah. But Chainbolt got replaced by Smashboxer, and cantripping grade ones are still very, are great, so having the team turn on, like, on first stride, being able to turn her on, is very good as well. Yeah. Uh, we've got for Grizel, again, part of the new suite of support. I think she's probably one of the... Everyone knows she's very strong, but I think people don't actually appreciate how good she really is. Like, we were saying just now how Narukami is the more offensive variant of Kagura, and then I think Grizel highlights that very well. Yeah. When you're able to have a solo 18k attacker, just, 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 just for playing the deck and being able to get a solo 18k attacker, that's kind of silly, I want to say, because there's a lot of 3k buffs, so proccing any one of those 3k buffs in the set will hit her into 21. Which is magic numbers. And that's yep. just her second effect as well. Like, on like on her own, she's almost comparable to Dil Dilesson, the D-Robo grade 2 that gets power. But then, yeah. like, the other thing as well is, her first effect that a lot of people overlook is also synergizes perfectly with what the deck wants to do. Because like any other sort of control-based deck, you're not super good at putting out uh, constant pressure. So even though we said that Narukami is the more aggressive variant, you're still relying on your Fatines, your smash boxes, your quad drives, a lot of these like passive effects to find your pieces. You're not like Messiah or Luard, who just gets its pieces for free. So the fact that Grizel is a core offensive piece, who in a way can kind of protect herself, like mm -hmm. you know, she'll still it die. Deter yeah, it, it deters people. Doesn't want to hit you exactly. So like the fact that she's passive advantage as well is also really huge. Yep. We've got Fortitura, who's I think probably still the best card in the Narukami main deck. Like I yes. don't see him ever being cut ever. Um. I don't think there's an argument to not play Chatura. If you don't play Chatura, I think your deck is severely lacking in something. I want to say early game pressure. But he does more than that as well. He does more than that. He 11k solo pre-GB with an on-hit effect that fuels your Thunderstrike and pluses you on. That, it's it's a must-up. Yeah, like, I, I can't imagine a reason where you wouldn't play Chatura. So yeah. next we've got four of the new Helena retrain, again, part of the new set. So he's kind of like Fatine, he's just on play, counter blast one, draw a card, gain 2k for Thunderstrike 3. Um, I think before the Vanquisher Grey 2 lineup was what? Chatura, Rock Climbs, and then... Voltages. Yeah, because there was just... And then what's his face? The When you ride him as Vanguard, counter blast one, soul blast one, retire. I think yeah, he, martial arts as well. Yeah, just because there's nothing better. So... Yeah. So we can see, like, from this lineup, we've lost a lot of retire power. But as you see, as we go down the list, we have a lot more retire power to make up for it. But then, Helena is a bit interesting because it kind of doesn't fit with the rest of the deck, as it were. Like, sure, he pluses and he's a one-off 11k attacker. But what what else do you think makes him so good? Um, In my eyes, the reason why... I feel hella... Helena's only played because he's better than all those ones that we mentioned before. Voltage Horn, Rock Climb. Um, so, when you see Voltage Horn and Rock Climb, you see them as, like, 
enablers that like retire their field, set up Thunderstrike. But then we've got Sparking himself, we've got V Buster himself, which kind of solo sets up like field wipes and solo sets up Thunderstrike 4. So that's why we can like start removing enablers from the grade 2 line and start replacing them with uh, more aggressive cantrips, uh, high hitters, etc. All right, so now let's look at the grade three lineup. So I'm I'm playing one Vanquisher, the old Vanquisher, just for ride consistency. We've got four Sparking, who's actually insane, like does literally from the deck once. And then we've got three copies of uh, Descendant Sigma, again a new retrain of an old card. So I remember very distinctly that when Sigma was first revealed, everyone was like. Oh, this card's not that great, or you know, this card's decent, but it doesn't deserve a triple R slot. You know, basically just kind of trashing the card, as it were. And yet here we are now with it being probably one of the best cards in the deck, like for your finishing turns. Mm -hmm. So I think the main thing that kind of slipped through a lot of people is that his restand skill is a rearguard effect, and it's not like it's generic. You can play him in anything, which is why we're playing him in this. Like, you don't need to have an Eradicator or anything, you don't need to counter blast an Eradicator. It's just GB1, Rearguard, counter blast 1, discard a card, restand if he doesn't hit. Which, given how much on hit slash offensive pressure the deck is already holding, like, that becomes really scary the later you go into the game. So, I want to bring in the conjunction of uh, Voltage and Sigma. Yep. So, by the time you go into Voltage, I think your average uh, Thunderstrike will be 7 or 8, yep. maybe even more. Yep. And so using that skill alongside Sigma's restand, if they're at 5 damage, they have to be guarding 2 attacks for at least 35. Yep. And, and that's then just really hard to it do. Just, yeah. It just stacks up more and more with more the more Thunderstrike you get. So the longer the game goes on, the more Thunderstrike you build up. Yep. If you're able to drop the Sigma on them, drop the Voltage, you can probably end the game unless they have control PGs yeah. or control guards. Thanks for Draco Kid X for following. The other thing I also want to mention is the combo of Sigma with V Max because, mm -hmm. as people may have seen in the uh, in last week's stream, if they're on four damage and you stride V Max and you call a Sigma, that's a really that's a really bad position to be in because then your opponent goes, okay, he's gonna deal one damage to me with the V Max anyway, so I'm going up to five, so I have to either guard the Sigma the first time, and then it'll resign and then guard it again and then survive against the V Max damage. Or you have to have to go. Okay, let Sigma hit me and then heal off the Vmax damage. That's not counting like the fact that they can swing with Vmax first, put triggers on the Sigma, which will restand, which you have to guard because you're on five damage, etc., etc. It's just, it's literally a lose lose situation for your opponent, which is what makes it so strong. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, thanks for Kupal Rame for following. So let's talk about the G zone. So I think most of our G zones are all the same. We've got. 4 Voltage, 4 V Buster, 1 Closer Dragon, 1 Sabreeze, and a V Max. And then the G Guard lineup is Impede Dragon, uh, Brahma, and Bulwark. So Bulwark's been an old one. And again, up until this new support, like you said earlier, the Thunderstrike on him was more of a restriction than a sort of payoff. Yeah. So, which basically made Bulwark kind of trash, actually. Whereas now that you can make Thunderstrike 4 really easily, Bulwark is just. Oh, really good yes and like, Being said, like, able, um, like if you're on voltage and they're on thunderstrike 8 for example then bulwark requires yeah. two front rows and that could just change everything that can just end the game right there yep so i think one of the things about v buster i find really interesting is that uh thanks tz sanity for following so one of the things i find interesting about v buster is he's a persona flip and he has a very good GB3 effect. So it's very easy to fall into the trap of comparing him to Ichikashima, like side by side. Yeah. But one of the things is that you will, I think you will absolutely always first ride V Buster no matter what happens. Yes. And I think the reason for that is because his first effect of Persona Flip on its own is just so strong that the GB3 is just an added bonus. The fact that mm -hmm. if you first ride V Buster, you're getting like what Thunderstrike four, just from two skills alone, and yep. then like the rest, like we said, because you now have such an easy time getting to Thunderstrike, the rest of the deck just you're allowed to play, be more greedy and build on the deck and just go off on that. 
Yeah. So just answering a question from the chat, uh, Red King Seven asks why three impede and why four voltage. So I'll discuss about voltage first. Uh, thanks, Maticus, for following. So the reason we're playing voltage at four is entirely for his GB3 skill. So like I just said, we're pretty much first riding Van uh, V Buster all the time. So one of the things that makes voltage really strong is the fact that we now have Grizel, who gets high numbers naturally. We have Chitora, who has an on-hit super pressure. We've got Sigma, who's got restand on not hitting. When you give these units plus 21k, plus 28k, plus however much they're going to be, which is going to be a lot, then suddenly every turn can be a push for game turn. Like, Voltage single-handedly turns your field into a Neo-Nectar-like field, where everything is lethal and virtually impossible to guard. And you might think, oh, that's kind of okay, but is that really it? And the answer is, to be honest, yes. Like, the strength of Voltage is that if you absolutely need to, you can first ride him for a do-nothing GB2 enabling. Because if, if your opponent has no field, then he's potentially more value than V-Buster, because you're not retiring a rearguard, but you can get two binds instead of just the one bind you get from V-Buster. It, it's a bit of a trade-off, but the fact that his GB3 doesn't need a flip, you just... or the fact that you need to flip to enable his GB3 means that you're going to want to rely on that more than once if the game goes long, because he is your main tool if the game goes long. Uh, then we have three impedes. So the reason I really like impede is twofold. One, because I think it's the best G-Guard in Narukami. I think it's better than Bulwark. Because it just lets you... It's unconditional. Sure, it's not as strong as uh, Denial Griffin, where your opponent... Because your opponent has a choice of what to get rid of. But it can potentially get rid of two rear guards. And at the same time, it keeps fueling your Thunderstrike. Which just makes it like... When you're playing against Narukami, you always have to take Impede Dragon into account. Like, in terms of, you know, do I call a booster to my, make my Vanguard 31k? You know, do I call the 7k booster so I can hit for 21 instead of just 14? Things like this, because depending on when they time the impede, if you're relying on a deck that's rearguard-centric, like Messiah, like No Grappler, whatever, then impede can just shut down your whole turn, and then you'll just lose access to everything. And that's a really big thing to play around, because it also doesn't really cost them anything. It costs them a heal trigger, and that's it. Because flipping G-Guards is whatever. Like we said, this deck is aggressive, it wants to kill you. And the thing about Impede as well is, even though I say that Luard and Night Rose aren't as popular in the meta anymore, they are still kind of there, and there are a few other decks that sort of rely on their drops in for various bits and pieces. So if you drop a closer dragon on people, like I've seen, I don't think I've ever seen closer dragon give less than 30k power at any one time. So you've got that, plus 30k, combined with Sigma, combined with Grizel, combined with Chitura. Like, it's a lot stronger than you think, especially with the trigger lineup of the deck. So the faster you can get to GB8, the stronger the deck becomes. It also means that <coughs> things like VMAX's GB3 is a lot easier to get to as well. And it just gives you... It gives you flexibility, basically, because as good as Bulwark is... Bulwark's rely retiring isn't ultra reliable. And then things like Brahma, gives you, which gives you 10k shield without having to need Thunderstrike, is fine. But the build the thing about Dragon Empire is that when you have access to disruption, you should take whenever you can. Because you know, bef like two or three years ago, Dragon Empire was just, oh, I'm going to kill your guys and do stuff. Whereas now it's a lot more aggressive. They want to like force you to make plays. So now the retiring your opponent's stuff is just tacked onto the end. And there's also, like, if we, let's be honest, there's not really much else you'd play. Because if you, you can cut a pair of voltages and then what do you add? A second VMAX, and that's pretty much it. Cause, or maybe a second closer dragon. There aren't really any better options because, uh, what's his name? Zoras is just the same as Voltage, but doesn't turn on GB2. Uh, Voltex Zappa is just not very good. And then there's one more, and I don't remember what he does, but I remember it not being very good either. Uh, I'm going to throw in a comment about uh, running four voltages. Yep. Uh, if you'll scroll up to our trigger lineup, we do run six stand triggers. Yep. 
So, because Voltage is a stride that enables our front row to hit ridiculously high numbers, and we run the Dragon Dancer stand trigger, which returns back to deck. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, once we compress down to a high trigger ratio and we have more stands than more stands than non stands, I'll say. You, you can go into a voltage, you can attack with your rear guards, then attack with the voltage, and then hit stand triggers, and your rear guards are hitting again at like ridiculously high numbers. It makes for like a similar to like a, the original Angel Feathers, really high broken hearts with a bunch of stand kind of turns. Yep. So it's just uh, running the four voltages, it's just accentuating our trigger lineup when what we want to do for our end game is that's like hit with really big rear guards a lot of times. And uh, moving on, from, like, on the back of that, that's the other reason I didn't, I chose not to add Drachma, basically, because Drachma is, it's good, but I feel that this is the deck that doesn't care about pressing your opponent's hand, because they should really be dead. Like, you can't force them to commit cards in the way that Kagero can, so you can't punish them with Drachma as aggressively. Uh, the thing about... The other thing about Drachma is that if you go into Drachma and it fails, unlike Overlord, you don't have a backup plan. You can't do cross end Legion. So, you know, let's say that you go into uh, Voltage, Second Stride, high powers on your Sigmas, and then that's it. You can't then go into. Going then into Drachma instead of a second set of Voltages is extremely dangerous because. Sure, the first voltage would have whiffed their hand into the point where they can't guard it anymore, but you're still risking turning off the rest of all your effects, and I don't think that's worth it. Like, I agree that Drachma is still decent, and it's you know, if you if you feel greedy, then yes, you can cut a pair of voltages for the Drachma. I just don't feel like it's been necessary because the deck already has enough really hard push as it is. I'll also add in that I think if you're going for a final push and if you can choose between Closer and Drachma, I think most of the time you would rather go for a Closer, considering our trigger lineup as well once again. Yep. Being able to use... If if I ride, if I stride into Drachma and then they have to deal with, uh, let's say, riding down to a grade 2, but then my rear guards are only hitting for... 21, 21, and then Vanguard 36. I think I would rather go into a closer and hit them with 60, 60, and number. A lot of, most of the time, rather than a Drachma. Yep. Uh, so, I wanted to talk a bit about my trigger lineup, about this exact split of the 6-6, six -six, because you've got four Rezef, uh, two Malevolent Jin, three Dragon Dancer, and then three Impacts. So, the reason we've gone 4 2 of the crit split, but 3 3 on the stand split, I want to explain a little bit, which is mainly all six of our stands counter charge, some in ways than others. So, Impact Dragon gives you soul, or as Vian puts herself back into the deck. And, like you said, like the fact that the stand can put itself back into the deck, whereas none of the other triggers can. You can lead. You can you can basically play to the point where your deck becomes three random cards and then three stand triggers, and then your quad drive V bus uh, V bus that becomes scary. Your voltage giving your rear guards plus forty k becomes scary. However, even though we've got <coughs> sparking giving us all the resources we ever need, having that extra bonus soul is still really handy because. You'd be surprised about how much deck the how much salt the deck actually consumes, combined with Jeffrey Clones. Like, we've got a lot of things that go into Soul for Recef as well, but it's a lot harder than you think. Uh, whereas Malevolent Jin is, you know, it's another three K enabler to turn Grizel from an eighteen K to a twenty one K, which is magic numbers. But we have enough three Ks from <clears throat> the Buster's effect and from the Starter's effect. That I'd value the extra draw a card and the extra five k on the Vanguard more, because while it's very good, you know, while it's easy to make your rear guards high power, your Vanguard pressure outside of V Max turns is a lot harder to come by than you'd think. 
especially because V-Buster is... Like, he only gives himself 5k driving crit. Like, when you look at, say, uh, Drag Strider or Gear Next, it's up there, but it's not quite on the same level. <coughs> so, one of the things I went for with my build, in particular, was uh, consistency, basically. That's why we've got four Helena, so we've got a fifth Vanquisher, three Sigma, and basically four of everything important, <coughs> with you know, the slight greed on the trigger lineup. But, uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put up your list. Sure. <coughs> which should be up. Yep, there we go. So the first... So, whoops. So yeah, the first immediate I'll, change I'll... that people are seeing is uh -huh. you're playing two copies of the starter. Yes. So walk us through, talk us through that. So two copies of the starter because when I first saw the starter, I thought this card was busted because back then we were in the GC Grand Blue meta. <coughs> Yeah, sorry, we were back then in the GC Grand Blue meta, and being able to consistently keep going at their drop zone against a Grand Blue user kind of auto wins you the game. Yeah. Um, I like that uh, he's not GB restricted. I like that I can get pre pre GB counter charges. Uh, the reason I have the second one is uh, I'll admit it's for greed, and that's for uh. I can G guard into a uh, first stride Thunderstrike seven because striding into striding into a uh, V Buster will hit me to two. Using V Buster skill will hit me to four. Using one Draco Kid will hit me to six. And so having the second Draco Kid out will hit me to seven eight, which enables the first stride five K front row and crit. And that's and that is absolutely disgusting. It's almost like your Gancelot. Yeah. Being being able to first turn Gans on someone as Vanquishers, oh god, it's demoralizing sometimes. Yeah. So and our so grade one lineups are the same. Yes. And but then I want to talk about the, the stand triggers. So you're playing yeah. uh, Dusty Dust Storm instead of Closer Dragon and uh, Impact yeah. Dragon. So when I first saw Jin of Rainy Dust Storm, my immediate thought was, this guy sucks. He's a stand trigger that you need to call to rearguard circle, and he only gets the skill. The, he only gets that skill for the one turn, and then after that, he's just a useless 4k dude. So, what, why do you think he's what he's valuable? I valued him more than the Eradicator stand because I actually found that I did. I, I personally didn't have resource issues while playing the deck. I found that uh, Spark King's beginning of ride phase skill was enough to. Uh, fuel me throughout the game so i wanted to experiment with uh a trigger that can get called out because most most of our triggers actually do get called out to use their skills yeah right and so this one actually adds a bit of on hit pressure mm -hmm. uh thunderstrike one when, when you call it this unit gets 3k and then you give a unit thunderstrike one if it hits you retire your opponent retires a rear guard and bands it face up yeah. So what this means is, by calling this out, more of your stuff has... Thun Thunderstrike 1 is easy to get. So basically, this skill is always turned on. This becomes a 7k booster on the turn it's played, making it equivalent to any other grade 1 booster on the turn it's played. Yeah. Turning on an effect that lets you on hit, plus one more Thunderstrike, and actually retire a unit, it's just extra on hit pressure, which uh, makes decision trees harder for your opponent okay uh finally that's that's pretty much it actually that's the reasons why i run it sure no, I, I understand that i think it's i think it has value i'm just i just feel that once you use it once it just might not be as amazing in practice as it seems like you said like the deck shouldn't have issues with resources so it's mm -hmm. you can spend that energy on cards elsewhere, but I'm not ultra sure that this is the right thing to do either. But we'll see. So let's look. I mean, look, uh, yep. look, look, looking at our like, what's 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 our like ideal booster here? Our ideal booster is like Smash Boxer, right? And Fatine, yeah. Yeah, but the problem with Smash Boxer, why I want to like try running a trigger that stays out as a booster, similar to how in my Overlord I ran Rock Shock. Yep. 
was uh because smash boxer disappears after he boosts optionally yep. mm -hmm. but when you do use him he disappears and there's no way to recycle him quotation marks yeah so being able to have the option as using a trigger as a booster is there as well yeah and i guess if like if you're on the v buster you can give him another 3k from the v buster so he becomes a 7k booster again so you theoretically didn't lose anything mm -hmm. so yeah i see why that so let's look further down the deck list. You've got two copies of this promo. Yes. Uh, he's quite an old promo. I don't remember where he's from, but the effect is uh, when your opponent's card is put into the bind zone from one of your effects, this unit gets 3k until the end of turn. Yeah. So, which means that so. if he's in play and you stride V-Vuster onto Sparking and you use all of their effects to completion, he will instantly become a 21k fight boost uh, attacker. Which is yeah. pretty good. And he's a 9k base, which is pretty good. So, my reason for using him is that... Like you mentioned with Helena... He is one of the... He's one of the grade 2s that doesn't kind of fit the deck. Or, like, fit the theme of the deck, which is, like, heavy aggression, heavy pressure. Yeah, he can trips on play, but then all he becomes after is a 9k. Which you probably throw out into the guard circle as an intercept right after. Yep. With this guy... Every turn you stride, basically every turn that you stride into V-Buster, he's going to become a 21k solo. And along with the 6 stand, six stand lineup, uh, basically like how we emphasize that we play towards, we, 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 we build our engine towards making our uh, final push, our end game being like V-Max or our uh, voltage and a lot of attacks kind of thing. Being able to hit higher numbers earlier leads to that faster. And that's the reason why I play him. Uh, this... Like I said, this is a greed choice that I'm only playing two Helena and two of this guy. But that's the way that I try and envision myself as a player. A greedier, riskier player. Yeah, that's I, I get that. Because my reasoning is that what this guy gives you is reach. In that, you know, if you look at the Messiah decks, we play the Metallia Messiah because none of our other rear guards can breach 20k. So Metallic yeah. Messiah is good for giving that final push on. You, know, you put triggers on him, swing, and then you can end the game when your opponent doesn't have a PG. But my reasoning is that I feel that this deck doesn't need that as much because you've got your voltages giving everything huge power. You've got your other rear guards already being big and swinging a lot of times. So that's why I personally think that he's not needed because the rest of the deck can do what he does already. He just gives you that extra avenue to do that with, which, as you've said, it's just a greed choice. But I think it, I think it depends on whether you want to be very, very aggressive, or if you want to just force your opponent into this rock and hard place position. Okay. Yeah. The other thing as well is that you're not play. You're only playing seven grade three, so you're not playing the original Vanquisher. I am not playing the original Vanquisher. That that uh, original Vanquisher got slotted out for a. Uh... The second starter. Right. So, uh, so look, in the terms of the G-Zone, you've got, you've still got Sabreeze, despite Sabreeze not working as well with Van with Vanquisher Sparking compared to OG Vanquisher. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel that, do you ever feel that you wish you had the original Vanquisher, or do you feel that you're fine without it? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I will say that sometimes there is the application where going against like an aggressive 11k, 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 11k deck, I kind of do wish I had the original Vanquisher so I could defensively turn on his Thunder Strike, get the defensive 5k and crit, and deal with that. And at which sense, at the same point, Sabreeze would feel better than striding, in, striding with him than it would be into Voltage. I mean, Sparking, sorry. But... The times that come up for that issue have been very little. Okay. And I only have Sabreeze in there as a flex slot. To be honest, I would actually replace Sabreeze with a, the second Closer Dragon. Okay. Looking at this list again. Because you think that Chatur is enough to get you through Grade 2 stall? Yes. Okay. So, so, what, so what's your opinion? on Martial Arts Dragon, so why not you running it? Because surely, you know, if you say that you're the greed player, you want all these like options that come up whenever, surely Martial Arts is the epitome of greed, because he's only really good when you ride him. 
because he's just an 11k on his own, doesn't do anything after that. Okay. Uh, the reason I don't run martial arts is, sorry, martial arts is, he's not better than Chachara. Yep. He's not better than Gozelle. Yep. And he's only a value ride when your opponent rushes you back, right? Yep. In which case, I'd rather call a Chachara to the side, attack their rearguard with the vanguard, and just attack Chachara to vanguard kind of thing. Yep. Martial Arts Dragon is a very cheeky card, and I'll admit you that. There have been times when I have, back then, when I did run Martial Arts Dragon, ride Martial Arts Dragon, re-ride Martial Arts Dragon to grade 2 them, and that and it's just a purely cheeky card. Like, that, it's second line of text, a Thunderstrike 3, get 3k. Now in the deck, with, um, I just don't feel that it's super relevant because 12k is kind of awkward with the 3k bomb buffs unless you buff him three times. But we only get, I only count maximum of uh, two random 3k buffs that you can get now. Yep. Which doesn't hit nice numbers. Yep. Uh, I'm, I want to talk on other grade 2 choices that I had before. Sure. So one of them was... um. Desert Shooter Kojin, I believe this is his name. Let me look him up. I don't know what that guy does. De no, Desert Gunner Kojin. Desert. This guy Gunner. was a GB1 Thunderstrike 2, 15k shield. Uh, hang on. Wait. Let me... I'm going to put this up on the screen so people can see it. Because I don't think anyone knows what this guy does. Alright. Desert Gunner Kojin, 8k Thunderstrike 2 on Guardian Circle, gets 10k shield. Wow. So, All right. The reason why I actually had uh, considered this card was back then uh, when I started playing new Vanquishers, Battle Sisters was a thing. Yep. And in the same sense, Ichikishima was a thing. Yep. So not being able to G guard, not being able to 10 guard really hurt. Mm -hmm. So what I was able to do was I played four Kojins that worked as 15k guards. And nice. because Battle Sisters usually peaked at around under 26k, that means that this 15k guard was able to guard the, their rearguard attacks fine. Right. So you can save the PGs for the Vanguard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, furthermore, I, I this there's a the 15k intercept. It's a 15k intercept as well. Yep. And considering that OTC Battle Sisters doesn't have defensive removal, he was there on their turn to intercept with. Yeah. Uh, the 8k becomes a non-issue because of the 3k powers that we get. Yeah, so I guess, like, if you have him in front of a smash boxer, you give them both 3k each from V-Buster, that becomes a 21k column anyway. So, yeah, you're not giving yeah. up any offensive pressure. That's not bad, yeah. Uh, the other card that I considered was... Um, the card that's, like, act once per turn, pay one, and this card gets 2k per your, uh, per your opponent's bind zone. Oh, Wyvern Strike awesome. something, I think. Yeah, Wyvern Strike. Uh, something like that. Nope. Right, right. It is Wyvern that, Strike something. We'll find this We'll find this eventually, guys. That card was a card I, I also initially uh, thought of, because similarly to... Um, sorry. Similarly to Shiden, it's a card that gives you early reach. Yeah. So if you're... The issue, the comparison between Shiden and him was that Shiden gets power for free, but he has to be on the field. And then if your opponent knows that, he gets a nice, uh, he gets a nice target on his head. Yeah. Ma, using the 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 new Narukami card, the one that stacks power. Uh, hang on, I'm still trying to find this original guy here. Plasma Tron Dragon. That's what it's called. Plasmatron. Oh, yeah, this guy, yep. Yeah. So, Plasmatron Dragon says Thunderstrike 4, which should be reached on first stride. Mm -hmm. uh, Counter Blast 1, and this card gets 2k for each card in your opponent's bind zone, which means 17k at Thunderstrike 4 minimum. Yep. Now, this card also says when it's placed on a rear circle, uh, bind a card from their drop zone, so which means that. If they're at Thunderstrike 3, you can call this to enable himself. Yeah. But usually on first stride, they'll be at Thunderstrike 4. 
Yep. Which means when you call him, you can pop him to Thunderstrike 5. Yep. Use the skill and hit 19k solo. Yep. Plus a 3k from one of the random buffs on the field. Hit him to 21 solo. Yep. Just just like my reason for Sheeta. And have a 21 solo early that makes it hard to guard. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Another reason why I considered this card was similar to the second Draco Kid, he mm-hmm. can turn on Thunderstrike 7 first stride after G after G guarding. Uh, let's see, G guard, starter for two, spiking for two. Yeah, have you, okay, yeah, sure. That's another reason. Yeah. That's not but too bad. the reason why I chose Shiden over him yeah. at this current moment is because Shiden is costless, and I would rather use a counter blast on stuff like Glizel, Helena, and Chatura. Yeah. And I think those are the two cards that I believed mm-hmm. were the were uh, other tech choices for grade two. Mm-hmm. And yeah, those are just other considerable cards that you can use. All right. So one last thing I want to talk about is you're playing a second Bulwark over the third Impede. So what's what's your reasoning for that? My reason for that is I actually do really like having two Bulwarks because... Thunderstrike 4 on the first stride, right? Yep. We've enabled that. So, Bulwark, Bulwark is guaranteed a 25 after you've strided. Yep. Brahma is there as your first G-guard. Yep. Now, like I said before, 25 guard, I really enjoy. Um, Impede, I also... That's the issue, right? Bulwark and Impede are such good G-guards. Impede is really insane, but I sometimes go into Bulwark before I go into Impede. Because I'd rather pop them. They both kind of do the same thing, but I kind of value the 25k shield. Right, okay. I guess that is what I have have to say. Okay. They sure. do kind of overlap in what they do because they do pop on guard. Yep. But, and Bulwark after, which makes Bulwark kind of worse actually. It's just 25k shield is just nice against resist. Yep. Now that resist force, resist nectar is becoming a thing. Being able to just drop him down as a 25k shield instead of going into impede as a solo 15. Who does nothing afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Is why i using two bulwarks at the moment. Okay. No, I, I understand that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should talk about. <coughs> so, earlier while I was looking for that card, I accidentally brought up a picture of uh, Wyvern Strike Tejas, who you may remember being the uh, grade 1... Uh, the grade one guy from like set three or something, or set five. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think about him? Uh, I'll bring him up again just so that we can see, and I'll remind you what he does, which is uh, whenever he attacks. Sorry, not this one, not Tejas. Uh, what's his name? The grade one. Ah, oh, what's his name? No, I'm thinking of the other guy. I think like grade one gets plus four k for Thunderstrike or something like that. I'm trying to remember if you know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Not off the top of my head. Is it a Thunderstrike unit? Yeah. It's grade hmm. one. Actually, there was another card I was thinking of for grade two. It's a. Pig. It's also Pig-o-ma, a pretty old his name is. promo card. It's yeah. called Stormbringer Dragon. Stormbringer. Okay, let's look at that. Stormbringer Dragon. When this unit attack hits a vanguard, you may pay the cost. If you do look at the five cards, search for grade three. Huh. Okay. So it's van- on vanguard hit pressure as yes. a vanguard circle. Yes. That helps you consistently ride. Yes. So I also really like this card because in my deck, I'm only playing seven grade threes, right? Yep. So it's harder to draw into them, but if I have a card that lets me check five for them, I have a higher ride consistency, right? Sure. So, but once again, the reason I'm not playing this over over the Desert Gunner is just because of that, my ideal gameplay of having that early reach to push them into the lethal voltage VMAX turn. Yep. But once again, that is also a cool option to use. Yeah, no, I think this is quite interesting. I didn't, I didn't even know this card existed, and I have a feeling that a lot of people didn't know either, so... In, yeah. Why did they print one of these for every clan? Hmm. Alright, so 
but it's, it's good to see that we've both got like sort of similar lists and it's kind of straightforward. So, alright, let's jump into the game. <laughs> 